the theme of the Brewmaster Monk is the drunken master style character. Taking in brews and alcohol, getting drunk, and then shrugging off the damage that you're receiving while being kind of loopy and uh, breathing fire is the kind of feel and aesthetic that you're getting with this character. You're going to have all of those martial arts expected with the monk class. So you're doing fancy kicks and punches, but you're also going to have that, like, you can't hurt me because I am such a master of avoidance and I uh, ignore the damage that I receive. Think Drunken Master Jackie Chan film from the 80s. So what it does well. The Brewmaster Monk has one of the easiest healing curves in the game because every piece of damage he receives, it splits half into a dot and then it takes half up front. So there is no large hit that will ever hit the monk all in one chunk. It hits them and then it becomes a dot that's pretty easy to heal off. Also, the Brewmaster has one of the highest damage output of tanks for Dragonlands. So if you are playing this Brewmaster to perfection, you're going to be almost competing with the bottom end of DPS classes out there with the amount of damage you can push out with this class. Be careful, you can pull threat off of the other tank if you're pushing out too much damage as this monk. Roll is also a very effective ability. The ability to move quickly every 15 seconds is just a fantastic mobility skill and it really feels rewarding. Brewmasters have a huge array of skills. They probably have more active abilities than I think any other tank. So played to perfection, they are very potent, but they're also very hard to play at perfection. Where with a, something like a Death Knight or a Warrior, you're going to be playing at a high level of their skill curve pretty normally. Where as a monk, that's going to take you quite a bit of effort and you're going to have to have the concentration and coordination to play this monk at that level constantly to keep up with those S tier tanks. Also, Brewmasters do not have any whatsoever ranged threat generation. So you're mostly relying on like throwing down your Ox Totem and then taunting it to get a lot of enemies from range to you. Otherwise, you're going to have to roll to them and then try and position them after you gain threat. Monks bring one of the unique raid debuffs, which increases all physical damage dealt to the target by 5% as long as you've hit them with one of your physical attacks. So keep that up and your raid will be happy. So what makes the monk fun? Well, competing with DPS is a lot of fun, so if you're able to get those damage numbers up, it can feel very rewarding. The role system, as well as just the general martial arts of this character, does feel very rewarding and it's a very pleasing rotation style and just ability set. Smashing a keg on your opponent's head and then breathing fire on them just feels really good. Also, staggering off a massive blow also is quite rewarding. When you see an attack that would usually do 80% of a tank's health and it does 40% of your health and then you quickly drink a brew and negate the stagger effect and it just feels really good when you're like, I'm saving this much damage from my team needing to be affected at all. The high skill cap is also very rewarding once you feel like you've got it. When you've mastered the monk, you feel really good about it. Where a mastered warrior, you don't feel like you're that far ahead of the others of the same class. There's a nice feeling when you get into the monk and you feel really good at what you're doing because you're utilizing this massive array of abilities and lots of tricky interactions. For your rotation and cooldowns, the monk is going to be mostly dealing with using your energy to put out keg smashes and then using things like blackout kick and tiger punch to reduce the or cooldowns of your bruise. So the bruise are the most important thing. You're going to be using keg smash and fire breath in both AoE and single target scenarios as your AoE threat. And then you're going to be using your bruise to shrug off the damage. So that's celestial brew, purifying brew, uh, healing elixir. There's some drink or fortifying brew. Yeah, there's lots of brews out there. <laughs> your character will be drinking all the time, and you need to use the other skills to reduce the cooldown of those brews. You really need to plan out your incoming damage with this class, using things like the purifying brew to get rid of massive stacks of stagger, and things like expel harm after taking a quick hit to not require your healers to focus on you so much. This is another one of those tank classes that does need regular healer attention. It's not going to be able to heal itself all the way up like a Death Knight can or like a Druid is able to do. It really needs the healer's attention keeping it alive, but it doesn't need intense healing. It only needs some spot healing and general 
uh, rolling hots on it to stay surviving, it, but it does need that external help. All the high skill expression of the monk comes from using your longer cooldowns, and you have a lot of them. From 15 seconds all the way up to 6 minutes, there's a lot of skills that you need to be tracking and knowing when is the right time to use. Monks do struggle with AoE threat generation. So when you are doing that AoE threat, you're doing your keg smashes and you're doing your fire breaths, and then you're kind of out of abilities to keep tanks or to keep enemies on you. If you use spinning crane kick, it's just not that effective and the cooldown is better used doing other things. So you are actually going to have to still tab target, which isn't something that a lot of tanks have had to deal with for a long time. But you need to switch between all of the targets that are hitting you and hit them with your tiger palms and your blackout kicks to keep them focused on you. This is another form of that showing skill expression with this class. You need to be focused on constantly switching targets. Looking over to the talent trees. There's a little bit of a disappointment for me again in the monk side of the talent tree. And I think this might come from classes that deviate a little bit more on what the jobs are between its specs. And what happened here is that when we get down to the capstones, there's three capstones here. There is one for when you're channeling Soothing Mist. I don't see any Brewmaster or uh, Windwalker Monk taking that capstone. Like, that's an exclusively healer ability. I don't understand why it's in the Monk side. Uh, summon White Tiger Statue, again, it's going to pulse some AoE damage. It's, it'll be okay for a tank. I don't see a healer taking it. It's really just a DPS one. And then finally, the Summon Black Ox Statue. Summoning the Black Ox that you have to then target and taunt on. DPS and healing monks are not going to take it. It is exclusively a tanking skill. So I don't understand why they put these into the monk side instead of making these abilities available in the spec-specific tree and doing some more cool generic abilities over here on the monk-specific side. So uh, I don't even take the capstone there. The Summon Black Ox statue is a lot of work for little benefit. You put the Ox Statue down, you have to plan where it's going to go, know where the enemies are going to be, put it down, target it, and then cast Taunt, and then you're going to get them to come to you. It does pulsate threat to all enemies, but that's not that effective of a skill. Like, it's just not that good. And you're not going to find yourself really needing this skill, so it's not a great capstone. The rest of the tree, there are a couple of things that you're going to kind of want to get, but there wasn't anything particularly exciting that I found throughout the tree. Like, getting Fortifying Brew is important, getting Spear Hand Strike is important, Ring of Peace is decent, but other than that, like, it, there wasn't anything that felt rewarding. I didn't really want to get those talents. I was like, oh, I have to have an interrupt. I wasn't like, yeah, I get an interrupt. So there's definitely that problem in the tree. Over on the Brewmaster side, there was a lot more choices. I, I do like what they did with the Brewmaster side. I like a lot of the capstones or near capstones. Uh, the second to the end abilities are pretty cool with Bone Dust Brew is awesome. The Exploding Keg is sweet. Black Ox, uh, Black Oak Cooldown is sweet. Weapons of the Order is awesome. Uh, so there was some really good choices and it was hard to make my decision up there. I did end up going with Weapons of the Order just because I kind of like that Keg Smash reset, but I think I would actually end up going Exploding Keg once I get ready for raiding, although I'll probably just take both once you're at level 70 and have the ability to get those. Uh, there was some cooler abilities throughout this. You get your Invoke, you get, like, Healing Elixir. It was, it was a little bit more rewarding and there was a lot more, like, do I take this, do I take that choices, which is what I was really looking for from these trees and what I don't feel like I got from the Monk side. So I will share this build that I'm going to be using right now and feel free to play around with it and then see what you like and commit to your own Monk build. I hope that this video has helped you decide if the Monk is the tanking class for you. It does have some excellent survivability and it has fantastic mobility. A lot of fun to do the kicking, drinking, and shuffling around your opponents as they struggle to take you down. Let me know what you think of the Monk tanking class. I'd rank it at about a B.